and welcome to our March 360 presentation. I'm Curator of Education Anna Smith, and today it's my pleasure to introduce artist Heather Cook. It's a special treat to welcome Heather today, since she has roots here in Dallas. Currently living and working in Los Angeles, Cook's recent work uses bleach to capture the afterimage of ridges, rumples, and folds on hung jersey fabric, thereby transforming it from common casual material to evocative topographic surface. Cook earned her BFA from the University of Texas at Austin in 2002 and her MFA from Art Center College of Design in 2007. She has since shown her work nationally and internationally. Cook was the subject of a two-person exhibition with Nathan Hilden at Volker Brodke Dusseldorf in 2011 and has had solo shows in Glasgow, Scotland, Los Angeles, and Pasadena, California. Recent group exhibitions include those at the Rosenblum Collection Paris, the Rubel Family Collection Miami, Max Hans Daniel Gallery Berlin, and Gallery Art Concept Paris. She is represented by David Kordansky Gallery in Los Angeles. And now, I greatly look forward to hearing Heather's own perspective on her work and experience. Please join me in welcoming Heather Cook. Hello. <laughs> so I just want to start off by saying that I'm really honored to be here. Um, as uh, most of you know, I'm from Dallas originally. And uh, I remember back in middle school, our class was invited to go to the Nasher home and sketch and just hang out with the collection. and. Uh, now, many years later, I am back here as an artist and here at the Nasher Sculpture Center. So I feel like it's come full circle and um, it's pretty exciting for me. And it's, uh, it's really cool to see that the Nasher uh, collection is still being shared. Um, so I just want to thank everybody for having me. Um, so I was trying to think how to start off this talk and um, I decided to start off with the series that I was doing um, back in 2003, which is a sewn canvas. So this piece here um, is enamel on sewn canvas. And basically the process of this work is uh, sewing canvas and then uh, stretching it over a stretcher bar and then painting it and then sculpting it and uh, just cut, yeah, basically sculpting the, the canvas. And then when the paint dries, it's frozen in that state. So you can see a side view of this piece. So I really wanted uh, the canvas to, the material, the materiality of painting to be more um, than just a flat surface. I really wanted to exaggerate the canvas. Uh, something uh, you should know about all my work is that I like to work uh, in the between. So between 2D and 3D, between material and immaterial, uh, between interior and exterior, front, back, surface support, presence, absence. Um, so, and here's another piece, which is um, the same size, sorry, the size is, that was about uh, 12 inches by 16 inches, um, that, both these pieces. And it's actually uh, the same, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, same amount of fabric and sewn the same way as the last piece. But this work, I really wanted to uh, see how different I can make it look um, in comparison to that last work. There's a side view of that. Um, now this work is uh, about uh, four feet wide and, uh, and uh, no sorry, I think it's, it's about six feet wide and, and four feet tall and comes out into the room about, uh, about three feet. And this is sewn canvas um, with enamel um, but it also has batting inside. So I really wanted the, the, the piece to really come out to the room and have more of a body and more of a presence in the space. Sorry for my photos, these are <laughs> kind of bad. But, um, and so here's another work that's four foot by four foot and comes out about uh, eight inches. You can see the side view. And this work, I. I wanted to, I, I basically made the piece inside, out, or showed the inside of 
uh, to show, to reveal the, the actual sewing of the canvas to kind of show more of the materiality. Here's a, a, another sewn uh, canvas work with enamel. And with this work, I, uh, while, while the paint was still wet, I, um, I put uh, a lot of stacks of wood on top of it to really compress the, the shape. And so when it dried, it had that compression, but um, it also has that compression, but also expansion in, like, in the actual folds. This piece uh, is basically all the scraps and the leftovers from prior sewn canvas pieces. And I, I really, this became a, a, a piece of chance where I just started just sewing the pieces together and let the shape kind of take on it, its own, uh, take, take, take over basically. And uh, came out this way. And then I really, um, Oh, looks really weird on, on the projection. Um, so this piece, uh, I was really wanting the image to become, bring the image back into the painting, because the other work was very much uh, more object and more uh, more of a more sculptural, and I really wanted to bring back um, an immaterial uh, quality to it. And so with this piece, uh, I painted a, a two-dimensional graphic of the shape. So, and, and then I just uh, tilted the shape so you can, you can see the two-dimensionality. Um, but also, I like how the white of, of, uh, and that two-dimensional shape really flattens out the piece. So you really, it's very sculptural, but also very flat. And here's a side view of it. So uh, in 2004, I went to um, Art Center, which is in Pasadena for graduate school. And I was introduced to, God, sorry, I'm look, noticing my images look really funny here up on the screen here. Anyways, um, so I went to graduate school in uh, 2004, and I was introduced to a lot of philosophy and theory. And uh, one of my teachers, uh, Liz Larner, who's actually speaking here, I think in May, uh, she introduced me to a book that was really influential to me um, by the name of Vault. It was called, it's called Volatile Bodies, and it's by Elizabeth Gross. And Gross uh, breaks down the different theories on the body uh, from a feminist standpoint. It goes through Lacan, Freud, Deleuze, and amongst um, other theorists. And this really opened my eyes as to how we are socially and biologically and culturally constructed and how our perception, how we experience the world is influenced by our surroundings, both physically and mentally, and how those two are really interconnected. I was really interested in the lived body as a source in which we internalize the space around us. So the body is both an object and a subject. Therefore, my body is both defining the space and being defined by the space around it. Uh, so these ideas really intrigued me, and I was reflecting on myself and how, how I create an image of myself and how am I being constructed, um, and uh, just thinking about my kind of origins. And um, so I started thinking about this in my work, and, but thinking about it more metaphorically in my work, and uh, started thinking about how an image is constructed in artwork. Um, so uh, since I was thinking of a lot of these, these earlier sewn canvas works as bodies in the room, um, I, with, with, with the viewer, I started thinking about how the body isn't really a blank page or a canvas, but something already inscribed from both the interior and exterior. So uh, basically thinking about how the blank canvas really isn't blank. There's already so much history there and there's already so much depth. Um, so I started thinking about canvas and about, um, you know, canvas as a fabric and I really wanted to extend, 
uh, the work into something, a, di a different kind of fabric. And so I started using these printed fabrics that I found um, at the fabric store and uh, using these uh, novelty prints. Um, I liked that there was like a ready-made image for me um, that was already provided. So here in this work, it's the print, this image is really kind of funny up here, but the print is of these, uh, these uh, brush strokes. So it's really flattened out something that's very physical. And what I did was, my response to it was to once again stuff it and give it this body, but um, also underneath this little ledge part, I, I basically copy, I did put actual material, physical brush strokes. So you have this kind of juxtaposition of the immaterial and immaterial, uh, um, you have the sign of the brush stroke and you have the literal brush stroke. <coughs> Sorry, that jumped up. Okay, so this is a detail, a really bad photo and a detail of a piece, but I wanted to show the fabric first before I showed that full-blown piece. But this is uh, shirting pinstripe material. And so I was thinking of the pin, this pinstripe as a line, a two-dimensional line, and I wanted to give it um, a, a physicality. So um, I wrapped the fabric around different widths of uh, boards to to give it a physicality. Oh. Okay. Um, so when you stepped back, um, it, it was basically kind of like a Barnett Newman zip. It's this line in the space, but a physical line. Um, it was attached to the top, this wall that was up on top there. And when you got up close, you see the pinstripes. And, and I, like, I allow for this um, negative space to kind of to be like another line in space, but you know, play with this kind of negative and positive. Lots of details of this one. And that's how it was attached up there. So I didn't really, I just want to kind of show you a couple of those printed fabric pieces because it was a transitional period for me, but I just thought it was kind of interesting to throw in there. Um, and then um, around 2006, um, I started making these uh, bleach on cotton jersey. Uh, jersey is the t-shirt is, oh, Sorry, <laughs> his T-shirt material. So probably a lot of you are wearing it right now. Um, it's stretchy uh, and uh, and uh, the way I, I was trying to like people always ask me how I came about this idea. And I mean, I remember really thinking I really wanted the material to make its own image and trying to figure out how to do that. And I happened to have. Um, a wad of jersey laying around in my studio, and you know, I can't really remember how it really happened, but I, I had it lying on the floor and it was all folded up. And I decided to spray it with bleach. Um, I use bleach because it's, it really interacts with the material and becomes one with material and, and alters the material versus, say, paint, which is just an additive um, uh, application. And, um, and I sprayed it with bleach, and then I spread it apart, and uh, it was amazing because it had an image of what it once was on the floor. So here's a detail of this one. Here's another piece, but I want, what I want to show you is from the side, it's completely flat. So it's really a photographic, um, I think it was a photograph of what it once was on the floor. Um, and um, Yeah, so I was really, I just got really excited about this whole uh, process. Because, and, and so I've, and I, I decided that all these pieces would be just easily just pinned on the, on the wall because I like the, the gesture of just a simple uh, pinning into the wall, but also that when, it, when it's pinned to the wall, you have that body still to the fabric. And jersey's very stretchy, so it really kind of has this drape. So uh, 
even though it's, it's really flat, you'll, when you see it in person, you'll see subtle, actual, real folds, but then you'll also have an image of the fold. So you have this juxtaposition of the immaterial and the material. Um, and uh, what I was also really excited about this is, is, once again, I still had a ready-made material like the, like the printed, mater uh, printed uh, pieces, but um, it, it was a little bit more uh, subtle attack to it. But what I loved about this, the, the ready-made of this is that it's a ready-made color, and every time I spray um, these pieces with bleach, they, they have diff the, the colors are made of different dyes. So a black um, bleach, or sorry, a black uh, jersey fabric, um, sometimes I'll spray it and it'll, the, the bleach will turn it um, pink or it'll turn it red or yellow because that's what the color was to make up that, that, uh, that uh, color as a detail. This was actually a, had a pinstripe in the, the jersey. Um, I also, uh, with the jersey, the, the other factor I, that I liked about it was that it is, it's, in life, it's an informal fabric. You wear, we wear it every day. And I liked this, I, I like to have these kind of puns and plays in my work. And I, in, in art, you, also, you often hear the word formalism. And, um, and I kind of like the idea that these were rather informal pieces. They're very casual. Um, and then also going back to that first piece that I showed you in, in that it was really sculptural because uh, I'm like, basically molding the, the canvas. This is also very um, sculptural in that it's like almost like carving into marble where you're, it's, it's uh, subtracting from the material. Um, here's another piece. Uh, oh, and then... Uh, and then the, my, the, the thing I really got into also is the play on positive and negative space. So um, if you see, so the original color of this piece is actually a, a, a really dark uh, green. Both, both of them are both dark greens, but different dark greens. So you can see the one on the left is a little bit more golden than the other one. Um, and so when, you, when the bleach um, hits the, the fabric, um, it's a subtractive, it's a negative, uh, it's taking you know, out of the fabric. But when you actually visually see it, it becomes the, a positive part of the image. So I like this kind of play on the positive and negative sp space, both immaterially, immaterially and materially. Here's a side view. I was trying to find a lot of side views for my pieces and I, for some reason, couldn't find them. Because really when you see a photograph of them, it looks like they're really folded up, but um, definitely work that you really need to see in person. Here's a detail of just the pinning. Um, and so this is the same piece. Uh, and uh, what, uh, that I installed, this is part of a show, but I'm just showing you this piece right now. But uh, I actually made this work in this space. And um, at a certain point, the light would, there was a window in the space, and this light would uh, cut into the room. And I wanted to incorporate that into the piece. So if you can see, the line of the light hits perfectly um, that, that shadow that's in the piece. And I was really when looking at these, these uh, pieces I was doing, I was really started thinking about shadows and how a shadow is an immaterial marker of something that is material. Um, and a shadow also places oneself in the room. So when, you, when you're standing in a room, the, your body, the, the shadow is actually a projection into the space. And I was really thinking about projection into a, a, a painting and, and how this light was coming into it. And so you have the immaterial shadow, but then you have the material shadow. And, uh, and then, so I started researching more and more about shadows and thinking about them. And I came across this story that uh, Pliny the Elder uh, wrote this myth on the origin of painting. And, uh, and uh, his story is that the first painting was uh, by a woman who wished to capture the likeness of her lover who was going off to war. 
She traced the outline of her lover's projected shadow on the wall. Uh, the silhouette was, the, uh, was to represent her lover while he was away. And just to kind of show you an image of this origin of painting, a lot of, there, there's been a lot of paintings um, done of this story. And uh, this is uh, by Joseph Benoit Souvi uh, from 1793. Um, so I just thought it was interesting that the, the first painting was actually from, from a projection, but then also just kind of as a, as a play or joke for me was that, that, that it was also a woman who was the first a painter. So, And then here's another um, painting uh, by uh, Jean-Baptiste Brignol and, uh, from 1785, Origin of Painting. So um, this is my uh, thesis show um, from 2007 at um, Art Center. And this is the outs outside uh, the space. It was t there was two spaces. And uh, I wanted to connect those two spaces by uh, creating these uh, leaning walls. So um, wait, let me just, I don't know if I, yeah, I guess I don't have a pointer, but <laughs> there's those two walls where I actually installed, and I just wanted to show that um, from the outside, but um, so now we're going to, this is, we're entering the left door here. Um, so this wall I installed here, and, uh, and so as bef before I was saying that uh, pieces were, um, the construction of the actual artworks are really important to me, but also like realizing that our surroundings are very much involved in our construction. And so I started thinking about the architecture and the space around the piece. So if you think about painting, and most paintings are uh, rectangular, and that's because uh, the architecture is 90 degrees uh, because the walls are 90 degrees because our bodies stand at 90 degrees. And so I started thinking about how, you know, our position in, in the space and how uh, these structures have been created and, and the history of painting. And so I wanted to kind of bend, bend the wall. Here, I'm gonna skip a little bit just so you can see how it was at this angle. Um, and then for this work, um, this is a bleach on cotton jersey piece. It was, it was stretched around a frame that was the same angle as the wall. So um, instead of the 90 degrees, um, I was switching that up and, and creating this angle. And so you kind of didn't know if you know, the piece came first or the wall came first um, and how, how that kind of originated. So, and it was, so the wall wasn't completely attached, so you, this piece was kind of sliding through and, and kind of intersected and bisected that work. There's a little peekaboo from the back. Um, now stepping back, um, I just, uh, we're gonna go look at this piece on the left here. Um, so this work is bleach on cotton jersey and acrylic. And so this work, once again, was made by folding it, it's, it's folded up on the ground, spray with bleach and spread apart, and you see the folds from what it was on, on, on the ground. But this time, after I did that, I folded the piece over again and sprayed it with acrylic. So you can see on the ground, and I, I did it in situ. So you'll see that there's basically a shadow or, or, uh, of the process of it being made. And so it becomes actually, you know, once again, immaterial material, there's actually a material shadow of, of its process. Um, and then just to go back real quick, it's hard to see, but there's this sharp shadow that is in the space, and that was also incorporated in the work, but it, this, the, the photograph's pretty dark, so it's kind of hard to see. Here's a detail. There, this, had a, this space had a funny kind of architecture, so I tend to kind of creep and use these funny parts of the spaces. So turning around, there was this work. 
which is actually red and black striped cotton jersey. Um, and then it's, ble it's folded up on the ground and bleached. You can see uh, the, the lighter parts are the, it's the bleaching process. But then this time I, I actually cut into the work. I was cutting out the, th coming off of the stripes in the work, I, was, I cut out uh, two sections. Um, to create another like physical line, uh, material line, but you know also to bring the wall forward and play this kind of uh, flattening of space and and you know, that positive and negative space. And I liked how this wall really mimicked that negative space that was in that piece, and maybe somehow that kind of plays into that the work on the right. So turning around, we we're just looking at that piece. Uh, we're going to start going forward and approaching this work. Um, and it's basically a giant pair of pants. And this is really blurry <laughs> um, for some reason on here. Um, but this work was done with, uh, the top section is done with uh, bleached denim. And the lower part is this novelty print that I found. Um, in the quilting section, and I just I, I thought this print was amazing because it's obviously a derivative of uh, Tama Finland um, work, and I could kind of go on and on about this print, but um, what really drew me to this was uh, thinking about Tama Finland and and how he really played with uh, notions of masculinity, and how uh, how he used really macho, uh, uh, like he would use uh, construction workers, bikers, uh, sailors, really uh, typically macho roles, but then he would sexualize them. So kind of it would be in this more, uh, what typically is, is feminine. Uh, and so highly sexualizing something super macho. And I really liked this juxtaposition of the masculine and the feminine. And uh, this kind of became, uh, like a, a kind of literalization of kind of some of the things I was thinking about in my other work. Um, this is also like one of the last works I did with um, printed fabrics, so um, that was, was just in there. Um, but also what I really liked about this work is that if, if you can really actually see it better, <laughs> the, the men's pants are, the folds really are defining the bulge and really, um, uh, uh, drawing you into to a certain aspects of 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 the, of the guys, and I I really liked thinking I was I thought there was this, like a good humorous moment for just laughing at myself because all my work does deals with a lot with the fold, and I, I had this weird obsession with it, and so I, I also I, I liked how in here there was this kind of revealing and concealing of, of this package that they had. <laughs> um, and, um, and, uh, and also, and then, as I've said probably a million times in this talk already, construction. I, I'm interested in the construction of an image. And so it was like literally these guys are like construction workers. And, uh, and who knows, like, are they constructing this show or, you know, um, but, you know, and them, but these guys in themselves are socially constructed too. So it was just, it was this humorous um, moment to kind of break up the rest of the show for, for me. Um, so now we're going to turn around. And there was this work, which is, I'm going to keep saying this, is blurrier than it should be. Um, but so this work is, uh, Base a drywall, and um, so what I really wanted with uh, I wanted to make a, a, an actual three dimensional um, piece, and but I really wanted to, you know I wanted it to be physical but also very flat because I want I like the two dimensional and the three dimensional to always be there, and um, so um, I really liked how it's really receded back and, and flattened out and, and actually. The, the piece that's hanging on the wall actually um, has almost pops, it becomes uh, the positive space and, and that wall, and the wall becomes a negative space. And then obviously there's the actual cutting out in, in, in that shape there. 
sort of detail. So as you walked around the space, there was this column, and the column is actually the same, uh, the same width that the cutout in the sculpture is. Um, so the column actually became almost like another sculpture in the room and, and, and played into this, this is a, the, that large piece is a bleach, and, a bleach on cotton jersey piece. So it played into that piece in the back. So this is kind of walking around. There's a detail of the bleach on cotton jersey. And you, you can't see it in this picture, but it's pretty amazing because the cotton jersey is you know, this casual material, but when it's bleached, it's amazing the color that comes out of the fabric. It can really start look, to look like really rich, like a satin or, or, some, or like metal. And so I like this transformation that happens with, with the material. There are some details. And so now you came around the back, and you see that on the side is revealed is there's the two by four that um, is is basically the structure the holding up the the piece, and then also in the back so on the back is um, stretched denim uh, with bleach, and then there's this other piece that's hanging. There's another one. So there's this. Um, Another piece that's hanging on the back here that's acrylic on um, cotton jersey. There's detail shots. And so it was made right there in, in the space, uh, that red piece that's hanging. And so once again, there's a shadow of this process of this piece being made. Um, inside, the piece, inside this work is a, is a frame. And I really wanted to play with this idea of surface support and how basically the surface is actually now becoming the support and holding up the frame. Um, but also, this once again, it's like, here's a detail. Detail, so it's sewn like, it's sewn like a pair of pants. And so once again, it kind of goes back to, go back up here, um, goes back to those, the guy's bulge. Um, so it kind of goes back to that reference. And so you can see through the, the space that you can see those, the construction workers looking back at you. And you know, the two by fours that they're holding in the, in the piece I liked was on that. You could see that on the side of, of this work. Go back up and you can see. Um, so there was another space next door. And here's the leaning wall. Um, that kind of that connected it to the other space, um, but this time the wall was uh, two by fours, but uh, was uh, cotton jersey because I wanted to kind of make a more a softer, um, a softer wall and have a little bit of a translucency there. And once again, this piece uh, right there is the same angle as the wall, so kind of a similar idea as the work in the other room. And then behind that was this piece. And this work was made by uh, pinning it up on the wall close together and spray painting it with this purple paint. And uh, I haven't done much of uh, spraying paint on, on the, the jersey. I usually stick with the, the bleach because I, I think there's something way more complicated going on in the bleach works than, than uh, just uh, spraying with the paint, because the paint just sits on top. But with this work, I, I was thinking, well, uh, paint is such an additive process, and it's, on, it's laying on top of the fabric. And so, um, and, and the bleach pieces are, are a subtractive process. So I was thinking, every time I show this work, um, I will, I'll, I'll spray it again. And so it'll continually get this layer upon layer, and then at some point, it'll just be a crusty um, a piece of fabric. Um, so it's really a, an additive, an additive, an additive process. And you can see that there's two different kinds of weird sprays in here, because the first time I, I made this work was in my studio, and then the second time is here in this show. So here's a detail, so you can see this off spray in the work. And that's just 
showing you how that's where that piece was when you back on that room. So, um, so after school, I was I really just continued on with um, uh, bleach on cotton jersey work and um, went through different gone through different series with the work and pushing different ideas with it. Um, this piece um, and and most of these works um, coming up are all pretty pretty much human scale. This piece is um, I think like about the sev uh, seven feet tall by um, uh, five feet wide. So. Um, it's very much like a one-to-one -one, um, relationship. Um, with this work, I was interested in the jersey really has this nice stretch um, to it, but I really wanted to exaggerate that. And so the, you, the line below, I actually cut to exaggerate this kind of stretch to the left um, to basically kind of create a, an image of this stretch and exaggerate it. And, and, uh, once again, playing with this immaterial and the material. There's a detail. Um, and I also had some uh, jersey pieces around that, because I buy these. I, I buy, I'd buy this this jersey material from this leftover scrap bulk place, and a lot of times uh, corners are cut out. Uh, because people um, t take them for samples um, when they're sold in the store. Um, or sometimes also I will cut it into pieces to, to do sampling. And so with this work, is actually kind of like a leftover pe uh, piece of fabric in my, in my studio and um, decide, you know, decided to leave that, that corner that's cut out. Um, and, uh, and then I, it, this is also part of a series of work that I also started folding the edges into the work. So if you, if you can see the bottom right um, section is folded up into it, the work is folded on the ground and then sprayed. So when you spread it apart, you, there, that section didn't get hit by the bleach. And I liked how visually the image is interrupted. Uh, you know, you have this continuous kind of fold and, um, in the piece, but then there's this dark area, and you can't, and you can't really decipher if you're in the front or back of, of, of the image, and it's kind of disorienting. Oh, there's another of the same details of that piece. So yeah, this is like a uh, purple, and so really you can see this kind of electric purple that came out of it. It's so another work where simply the corner was just folded over, um, but you'll see that on the bleach had soaked through, so it really has this almost like looks like a page turning. Here's a detail. Um, now this this piece is uh, called Square in Its Shadow, and it's one single piece of fabric and it was it was made by the piece that's on the floor lying on top of the piece that's hanging on the wall and it was folded up on the ground sprayed and separated and really wanting to bring push further the idea of the shadow being cast into the room um, but the I was thinking of this black area as being this tilted square, uh, two dimen basically a two-dimensional shape, but then that two-dimensional shape having a shadow, so this uh, 3D, 2D um, combination. And, uh, and also the fabric still being attached to it, so you know, as, as I was saying, the body is always, it's always attached to a shadow. It's what places you in the room and, and uh, and uh, so, yeah, so, and then I also, you know, I was kind of trying to creep out onto the floor a little bit more and get more into the realm of the space of sculpture. This work is um, the same material that was in that show, which was, it's this red and, I'll skip forward real quick just to show you. It's this red and black, uh, red and black striped jersey material, and then you'll see the bleach that's on top. But going back, uh, I cut out, I, I, what I did was I cut out the black, a couple of the black stripes and left, um, uh, and left uh, the fabric still attached. 
um, and, and just hanging out on the floor. And I kind of think that, that once again, that becomes, these become like these kind of funny, weird cast shadows, or also makes the, the line, like this material line that kind of oozes out onto the floor. And then uh, I started um, playing with draping the fabric on the wall and spraying it. Um, so these works are just simply made by pinning the, the pins closer together, spraying, and then you just um, pulling it apart. This work, I, I, I left more, more of these fold, these, the drape in there and the folds in there, so you can kind of really have both the material and the material in detail. And uh, so here's another work where, but this time I decided to cut a, a, around the, the drape to, to create the shape to give this sense, of, this, this, give it kind of an image of how it would look like if it actually was draped. It would have this kind of like um, the, that shape. But I also didn't want to do it perfectly. I wanted to kind of make it wonky and kind of really throw you off and, and not really, because it's, Almost becomes kind of cartoony in a way, but um, uh, not really take the image all the way there. So here's a side view, so you can see that it's completely flat. But you'll see there are still like subtle drapes in there. More details. Here's a work where uh, I let it go uh, to drape uh, onto the floor. So with this, and you'll, I'll show you a side view to show you how it kind of came out onto the floor. But really, what I, what I wanted to do with this was to to pop the, cor the corner of the room for you really bend the space. So the image really straight on, you, it, it was hard to differentiate uh, um, that space. And I like to also kind of how it oozed out onto the floor. There's a detail. You can start to see some, some, some of the jerseys are, are, ri are uh, ribbed so you can see the, the, the lines and the fabric. And this is taking a similar idea, but thinking about how these works, you actually, you know, you, you walk around and, um, you know, thinking about the front and the side of, of a piece. And, and I, so I want to change the perspective of, of, of how you, so like we're, even though you're looking this straight on, it looks like you're kind of you're looking at it from the side. So this is also a black jersey, just to kind of show you also that the, see you can tell that the the dyes to make this black was um, uh, is this purple color. It's just it's really interesting to see what the bleach does to what what this to reveal what kind of dyes are in the the material. Another drape piece where um, you yeah, are wanting to cut into uh, the image and kind of undermine the image, I guess. Similar deal where, where there was a, this was like a scrap in the corners cut out. And here, this was actually had a lot more ribbing in it, so it had really has this, this texture when you got up close to it. Uh, and this, this piece, once again, play, uh, playing with the, uh, the physical uh, positive and negative space, um, and then also the idea of the cast shadow on, on the floor. Not still connected, it's just tenuously held on by that little bit on the right. This is a really dark photo, but um, I don't know if you guys can really see it, but basically all the corners were flipped in on this work when it was sprayed on the floor. 
and so that's why they're, they're, the corners are all black. Um, and uh, I decided to, to cut out that bottom corner to, to once again create another um, material in like negative space and then flip it down and, and then that kind of being a shadow of, of, of this corner that, that was flipped over. It's a bad detail. And then I started. Uh, I came. I started doing this uh, series that I call uh, the routine, um, routine series. And uh, these pieces are, they're all still bleach on cotton jersey. But um, on top of them, they have um, silk screen numbers and arrows on them. So you'll see. You can't, it's hard to see right there, but you'll see up close that these are these numbers and arrows are actually silk screened on the piece. And uh, the reason for that is because I, here's a, another detail, is because I started um, putting these, uh, you know, for transport to, to shows or for storage, um, these fabrics had to have a home. And I started putting them in these, these boxes. And so I wanted to reference that architectural space that, that they were living in. But also, I noticed when the work is, is folded up for a long period of time, um, they would get these creases. And so I really wanted to maintain those real creases alongside the image of the crease. Um, so you can see this grid, and that's from the folding up. But if you got up close, you'd see that there is actually the little, you can really see an actual crease in it. But so, I don't know if it's, you guys can understand but as far as the instructions on the work, but um, going back up to this piece. But so if it says one and it's pointing to the arrow, you fold on that line and you go like this. You go like this. And then if it's and then you go to the two, you fold it up and three. And then it would fit perfectly in that box. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I guess in a way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, but it's also really funny because you know you send your work out to these shows and and people, you know, they don't they don't some some of the uh, people who are taking down the show they don't know the concept of the work and, and it get, ends up getting folded up a different way and I I think that's that's funny and cool whatever <laughs> like that's just the way it, like this, these the life of these things go but uh, but uh, yeah so. Um, and also, you know, you have these arrows, which is another level of index um, it, um, to the work that you're pointing to something. But so, you, so there's the, the crease. Oh, I'm pressing the wrong buttons. Okay, detail of that. And so these are called routine for um, several reasons. Uh, uh, one of the the main reasons was I found myself constantly <laughs> folding fabric in my in my studio. You know, already folding laundry at home, and now I'm uh, f for some horrible reason I've decided that I'm going to be doing it all day to the studio. And so I just it kind of you know I have to I have these moments in my work that I just have to laugh at myself <laughs> of like what I'm doing. Um, and so I really wanted to reference this like habitual like everyday process of folding. And uh, so I wanted to point that out, literally. Um, and so that's one reason why they're called routine. But then also, I, I also thought of Andy Warhol's uh, uh, dance uh, step pictures um, and thinking of this as this kind of dance routine. But instead of like a bourgeois waltz, um, it's referencing my everyday um, activity. Here's another one of those. Here's another piece where I started you know, incorporating several of the other ideas that from the other pieces where they have the cast shadow and, and playing with the angles of the space. And what's the size of that piece? Oh, um, this piece is, I think it's about, uh, it's about eight feet tall by, um, like six feet wide, and then it comes out into the space um, about three feet. That was, 
I didn't, I didn't write down all of the specs and all these things, so but that's my guess. But, but generally, a lot of, generally, all this work is all um, human scale, so um, probably is what we know. They're usually five, five, five to seven feet wide because that's the way the, fab, the size of the fabric typically, the width of it, and then the height I usually try to keep as a human scale, so just a notch above, so it's like usually seven feet tall. There's a detail of that. And this piece actually, I added on, um, and uh, this, I don't know if you can see, but there's actually a seam. I had sewn the uh, two pieces together. So the seam, you fold on the seam, so that becomes another like literal line, another kind of level of, of the crease, another physicality to that line. Um, this work is, uh, same, you know, same thing routine, with the routine series, but this time I actually, when I was spraying on the ground, I inserted the, the box um, that the work was gonna be going in underneath. So this square up in the, or this rectangular shape, I should say, up on the left-hand side here, right there, is the, a, a trace or a ghost of, of the box that I had underneath there when I sprayed it. But once again, this is completely flat when you, when you come to the side of it. It's just an image. Some more of the numbers. Uh, this is another round of work where I decided I wanted to bring back the materiality of the bleach a little bit more. You kind of, the bleach really was so, the mist of the bleach really kind of sometimes get lost. And so I, I, uh, I, uh, threw this down, and uh, um, oops, yeah, and uh, you know, creating another layer of of space. Uh, uh, this uh, really, actually, this really deep absorption um, really comes back. It goes back and forth when you're seeing this in person. Um, this is a show that I did um, in Glasgow in 2010 uh, as part of the Glasgow International Fair, uh, and it was done with uh, this pop-up space called 10 Till 10, and they, every time they have a show, they do it in a new space, and this space was a, a, a weird like office space that was abandoned, so you'll see that the floor is actually this like, carpet. And uh, there was three, I, I had three rooms um, for this show. So this is, in one room was this piece. Um, as you walked around, it really played with the angles and uh, perspective in the room. There's a detail that will pin. So this is in another, the next space um, was this work, uh, which is uh, uh, basically it's a two-tone gray uh, striped piece. And what was really interesting about this, um, as you can, I don't know if you can see it, but it also kind of pop open, pop that, this is put placed in the corner, so it would really pop the corner um, out. Um, but then what's, what's interesting about this fabric was that the lighter gray, um, the heather gray section, didn't bleach at all. And so the image actually s appears to be sitting behind the, the gray stripes. So you, you kind of didn't know, you know, what, you, know you're, you felt like, you were, um, like the image was sitting behind uh, those lines. Just kind of looking at another view of it. And then when you kind of started turning around, just to kind of give you an idea of the space, um, there was this piece, which is a little bleach on cotton jersey um, piece, but then set behind it is uh, this blue bonnet, the Texas blue bonnet tartan. And I thought, well, okay, I'm going to Glasgow. The first thing I think of is tartans, and since I'm like a fabric obsessed, <laughs> I, f I, I wanted to incorporate uh, the tartan, and just because also it's kind of a cliche <laughs> in a way for, for, for Scotland, but, um, but I, so 
before I came out to the show, I ordered, uh, a, a, you know, thinking about the tartan is is uh, a representation of your of a family, and and, and so I was thinking about kind of origin, you know, the origin. Since a lot of the work I'm thinking about the origins and construction of the work, um, I decided, well, I need to represent Texas, right? So um, <laughs> I just uh, so I I ordered this and I brought this along with me. And I placed it behind this work to literally, yeah, play with my, my background um, uh, and like, thinking about the piece's background and my origins. So I'm not Scottish at all, but I just, you know, thought I'd throw that in there. Um, so there's a detail of the... And so this, this is a bad photo, but I just wanted to kind of show you the, the next room we moved into. Was, so you see, you'd see this space that it was a really wonky space. You had these pipes um, uh, on the floors here. And I, I liked it with the other piece with the stripes. Um, which I'll go back up there real quickly. How you know these lines in the actual piece are in front of the image, but then now you also have this other like pipe line in front of, of that work too. But I'll go back to this. So you kind of came to the side and the image would fall apart. And then you turned around and then there was another bleach on cotton jersey piece. But then behind this was um, the Glasgow tartan. So I, when I arrived there, I, um, I purchased this, the, the Glasgow tartan. And all the work, um, I forgot to mention, was all made in this space. And so kind of, I was kind of thinking, OK, this the origin of these works of these, uh, was in Glasgow, so I felt like I had to also have the Glasgow tartan as the, the backdrop and the background of, of the work. Pretty, I don't know if you can see that, but they have pretty good wallpaper in there too. Um, so this is, uh, um, the sh a show that I had in 2011 at David Kordansky Gallery in Los Angeles. And uh, this is an installation shot. Uh, I, I really liked when you walked in that the space was kind of blank. A lot of the work kind of faded off into the walls and there was kind of this absence of the show. But I'll kind of take you on a little walk through. So this is looking, so we walk in and then to your left, is that, once again, this photo is like blown out and kind of blurry, so I don't know if you can make this out. But um, you'll notice to le to, that there's a leaning wall right here, and then turning back around, there's another leaning wall right here. So they kind of became bookends to the show, and I'll get more into describing. So you kind of start, so I'm gonna walk up and look at this work. You got closer, and you saw that there's a photo of me. <laughs> um, the the wall, this leaning wall, I brought the leaning wall back. Uh, the leaning wall was actually pinning and holding this photograph up, and uh, this photograph um, actually is a, a photograph that my 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 dad took um, every year. We uh, have a Christmas, my, when I was younger, we do Christmas cards, and each kid, um, there's five of us in total, each kid would have their own photo, and it would represent what you did that year. So, like, my sister, she, um, she graduated from high school, she would have a cap and gown, and there'd be a photo of her. And, and then my, my brother, if he had gotten his driver's license, would be sitting in front of a car. And so that was, like, our Christmas card. And I just remember it was always... <laughs> traumatic because we, we, we just never wanted our photos taken and we didn't want to do it and um, but anyways so this photo was uh, when I was eight and uh, that year I my mom had signed me up for modeling classes and I was um, taught this the only pose I can I can remember was this like lean in pose um, and my so anyways I remember <laughs> this photo shoot with my dad uh, and I was, we were just taking normal shots, and, and uh, nothing was working, and, and, 
and my dad's like, do one of your modeling poses. And then I was like, oh, and <laughs> smiled. And it worked, done. Like, it was like the, yeah, that, oh, it was, I mean, we were, I've, I, between shots, we were always crying, like, oh, I, wanna, I don't wanna be here, I don't wanna be here. I'd go watch TV or something. Um, so it was done, and I was like, oh, this is great. But so, more and more recently, I've been like looking, I start, you know, going through photos of me and my friends throughout the years and with my family. I noticed that I tend to always do this pose, like in all my photos, and it's really unconscious. And I like I was going through these photos, I'm like, why am I doing that? That's so weird. I do it in every and I, I just started realizing, I went, started thinking back to this photo. I'm like, oh man, that's like my modeling pose, and that's what I do now. Like that's that's how I'm supposed to take a photo. That's how I present myself. So, um, so I wanted, to, and so this reminded me of those leaning walls, and um, and how like those wall, those the leaning wall was like a support in a frame, and and really also at the same time engaged in the 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 viewer's body and how when you went up to the, the when you were near that leaning wall in my last show, it really had a, a pull on your body. So I wanted when the viewer came up to this piece to. <laughs> Kind of have a little, like start striking the same pose, um, and uh, really like so this and also so this wall supports this photograph, and I kind of think that this pose has been my crutch or my support throughout my life, I guess, with my presentation of myself. So um, okay, and this is the back of the wall. So the, so the 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 structure. Um, of, the, of this wall was revealed um, to so that show that how that the materiality and show how that was made. And you can see if you could see, when you peer down, you could see the edge of the photograph peeking through. Um, and then this isn't the other work in the show that uh, is uh, once again uh, drywall piece like the, the work you'd see, seen in the other shows. And really flattened out once again. And I put also, played with the architecture and put it on this, there's these seams on, on the concrete in the gallery and I, I squared it um, right on the seam of the floor in this space. So as you creep around, you start seeing the two by fours on the side, the structure being revealed. And then you had, uh, you went to the back side of the piece, and there was actually a back side. So, really playing with, um, yeah, the, the idea of the front and the back, uh, again, of a, of a piece. Um, and so now you actually have a back side. And this is, the back piece is, uh, it's stretched denim. And, but it's uh, sanded, so it's, uh, denim frottage is what I like to call it. But it's uh, sanded down to look like a worn pair of jeans. And I wanted to play off of like the architecture of, you know, clothing is an architectural space that that our that our bodies are in. But also that our our jeans are or our clothing really show these traces of of where we've been in our past, and. Um, I liked the you know the sanding as another the the bleach works you know once was that this kind of carving and subtraction of the material and this is another kind of uh, subtractive um, process and carving into the material. Um, so the view, um, and then. So in the back pockets, uh, this one back pocket, there's a, you can see there's an image of a stretcher of a painting, and I put this stretcher in the back pocket and did, and, and did trace and, and rubbed it. So it kind of also looked like it was hanging in the it like it was like hanging on the wall, but it was just a ghost of a frame that was hanging on the wall. That angle, and then you'd see, God, these images are so bad on this projector. <laughs> um, so you would see um, past that, that, uh, that piece and you would see actually that's the stretcher that was in that back pocket. So 
So that's that piece that was in the back pocket. And this is, I think, three feet by like two, three feet by like two and a half feet um, in this size. And this stretcher is actually a, an old stretcher from, I'm not really sure, what, probably from college. I, I probably did some life paint, life drawing, painting, whatever on it. Um, and I wanted to use like an old canvas because I was thinking about the, or, the origins and beginnings of, of my own work and that history. And so I really wanted that his, so this, oh, this is stretched denim on this also. And so I, I wanted, so I did, the, this is a sanded down. And so I wanted this idea of, yeah, the history of, of my work and my, my, my painting, or my, or my painting and sculptures that I do. Um, to kind of come to the surface and be this kind of ghost that comes that comes forward. Here's a detail, so you can cut, you see the wear and tear from it. So now we're gonna go to this side of the show, work our way over, and there was a, a routine piece here. Um, pretty much described this idea earlier, but um, this one has, a, a, has, once again, a sewn seam in it, uh, and this seam, uh, you can see slightly on the left here, would line up with the seam on the floor. So lining up with the seams uh, of the architecture, and there was the, you know, the seam in the jeans, and there's the seam um, in this work, and so really playing with uh, with, you know, this routine, the routine piece playing with the architectural space and how that's informing the body of the work and, and the image of the work. Oh, and then you'll notice there's like these bulges coming through. I had shoved like old, old work underneath this piece when I sprayed it on the ground, so it has this image of these bulges coming through. There's a kind of side view of it. And then, that, so then there's the other um, angled wall piece. That's this, it's the same piece, and that, that work um, can always be like repeated because the, actually the name of, the, of those wall, the wall piece with my photograph are called lean repeat because it is this repetitive process. And here's, this is actually in the studio, but I just wanted to show the other angle of that artwork. <laughs> Going back to the show, um, there was this rag rug on the floor here. Oh. And uh, this rag rug, um, I started weaving, uh, going back to thinking about the construction of, of, of a painting and um, now, now wanting to actually create the fabric. But um, the rag rug is made up of the negative spaces from uh, cutouts from uh, those other artworks that you'd seen earlier, um, and also, to me, yeah, the, the failed artworks <laughs> um, I had just stacks of, and also studio clothes um, that no longer could be worn anymore because they had too many holes in them. But um, and so they were shredded up and then repurposed and and uh, sewn to make, or sorry, uh, woven to to make these rag rugs. And so, so this is double-sided, so if you flipped it over, this is what the colors were on that side. Here's a detail you can see. So I like the going back, it, these pieces going back to the floor too, because that's really where all the work, a lot of the work is made is on the floor. So um, uh, really kind of, bringing it back down to the floor again. This is, and there was, a, there was a back room and there was another rag rug and this is that one. Details of this. You can see some of the, ble the bleaching in there. And then, oh, that's really dark. Um, so, so after that show, I, I uh, continued on with um, doing these denim frottage pieces and, with old um, stretcher bars. So here's a, here's a detail, another bad detail. Um, 
couple of those. And then, um, and then this one, you, probably, you just can't see at all. <laughs> um, so this is, is it, believe me when I say that this is a stretch of denim over a frame and it's been sanded down, but you, can, you can't see it with this projector. And this is actually a frame that I have that was my mother's. Uh, my mom it was an artist, and um, she has since um, moved on from artwork. But, but she used to make art, and I had a bunch of her old frames. And I decided, well, um, you know, I wanted to do a photage of her work because really my you know, I probably wouldn't have become an artist if it wasn't for her. She was definitely a big influence to me. And so I thought, well, you know, literally she rubbed off on me. So I, I, uh, I, I wanted to do one of her frames. There's a bad detail over that. And so this is actually, this is my mom's artwork. Um, and um, I started realizing how really influenced I am by her work. Um, you don't you, unconsciously you kind of come home and you realize, oh man, this is like I'm really inspired by her work, because what this is is um, these are uh, planks of uh, wood that are two by a quarter of an inch deep, um, two inches by a quarter of an inch deep slats of wood that are each wrapped in canvas and then um, painted in in the the paint the name of the paint color. It, here, here's a detail to show you that these are slats of wood that are covered with canvas. Um, but you'll see that she 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 wrote the the name of the the color that came straight out of the tube, and so she had these ready-made colors that she um, was using, and then she uh, labeled the color that she had used. And I started. I was like, oh man, this is where it's all come from. <laughs> like a lot of this has all come from. And so I wanted to do, so I started making my own stretchers and making these planks, plank, uh, these frames that had planks of wood in them like my, like my mother's. But then, but for mine, I, I'm stretching uh, denim over and, and doing the frottage. And then you, this has a bit of bleach um, that spilled on, on it. So you'll see the detail of that. Another one, the detail of that. And then I started playing with different ways of distressing jeans. I, I'm, really in, I'm really into uh, the, the distressing of, of jeans because really you're creating this image of, of these folds that you never, that, that don't actually exist. And I really like that immaterial material quality, but it's of this everyday. Um, Material and that you see all the time. Um, this one I dipped in bleach, um, kind of like that gesture of of the dip, but also kind of almost thinking of it, kind of the image degrading away. Um, and then. To finish this talk off, uh, I just wanted to kind of give you a glimpse into the studio of what I'm in the works of right now. Um, as I said before, I was, I'm, I've been weaving uh, lately, and I want to start pushing that and putting that in my work. And um, this is this is a sketch um, of, I mean, it's a it's an actual weaving, but for me in my head, it's a sketch of what I want to do on a larger scale. But this is um, a weaving that's uh, called shadow weave. So bringing the shadow back in, but now um, there's a detail of it. But now it's, uh, it's integrated into the structure. Um, what I like about the weaving is really it's, you're getting into the structure of the, of the, um, the fabric and, and into the construction of it. And, uh, and it create, I like how it creates this image of these shadows. And, but also the way it's made is the, there's a white yarn and a black yarn and, and, and it shadows, each yarn shadows each other. There's a blown out version. And also, um, I can never get a really good photo, photograph of this. Um, and I think, I think I brought it with me. I actually brought this draw. This is a, 
a, a weaving draft. So this is a drawing. This is Prismacolor on on a, on a graph paper. And basically, a weaving draft basically sh is the instructions on how to make a weave. So um, probably doesn't mean anything to you guys, but these these all these marks are instructions for me on how to make the the, the weave. And um, and in person, you can see the actual image of what the fabric's going to come out to. But this is the draft for, for that piece. And my idea is that what I want to do, um, what I'm working on right now, is that I want to uh, do these weavings of these shadow weaves. But then also, I want to do, uh, uh, do uh, make larger versions of these drafts and have them silk screened with um, the, the weaving, so basically you have an image of its making and the, uh, of the making of these actual um, patterns and weaves. And this is um, really hard to photograph once again, but this is another shadow weave, but the, the yarns have actually painted. Um, I painted them with acrylic um, before I put them on the loom. So now the, the, the actual, you know, the paint, the, the painting is actually integrated into the structure of, of the piece. There's a detail of that. And that's all I got for you today. <laughs> Thanks for sitting through. All righty. I don't know, I mean, if you guys have any questions, let me know, but. Mm -hmm. People came to mind. I mean, the first thing I thought of was Robert Rauschenberg's bed. Yeah, yeah. And, and, but yeah. I also thought of, uh, say, another cloth, uh, an artist who embedded somewhat in cloth is Joseph Hobbit. Mm -hmm. Close at hand, and, um, and uh, Gutai artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I always I, originally I was really yeah, into Manzoni too, and um, yeah. yeah um, I guess what what I yeah. I mean I'm also a big fan of Rauschenberg too. Um, I don't know. It's kind of weird to think about how you sit in history and you never really know. But um, uh, I really. I guess with my work that I think is, I guess, different for me is, is really working, trying to get closer at that, the flat, the, the immaterial and the material. So really the flattening out, but also really having that physicality. So really a space to project into, but also um, having that physicality. Um, I'm into, I mean, I'm definitely like uh, really into all those artists. I mean, I don't know like how, yeah, I don't know how to, I guess, answer your question as far as how I sit in the history of things. <laughs> I, um, I, you know, you just kind of follow your own, um, I don't know, I just, I follow these ideas that I have and um, it's just kind of when it comes out, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if I can answer your question really well. You mean like some like something other than yarns, like a uh, different like. Because uh, I think the idea of the weave is really, you know, really interesting. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I've been I've been playing with these um, tests of of while the warp is on the loom, uh, bleaching in between. Uh, uh, bleaching the warp is the uh, the yarn that yeah you're basically working off of when it's on the loom. But um, yeah, bleaching in between. So then the bleach would exist between uh, the the warp and the weft. And so I've been I've been playing with that, and I I think that will potentially be another. Um, uh, place to go to. Um, but the thing about weaving is it's definitely a different pace than all my other work. My other work is it's, it's, it's a, a quicker pace and I can develop it a little bit faster, but weaving takes a lot of time. So I'm just, I, would try, I have all these ideas of what I want to do, but I got to, you know, spend the time to do it. But yeah, I think at some point the bleach will be maybe incorporated in, 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 in the weaving. So. All right, well, thank you guys.